Hey guys, Meteor Rebel Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday mountain weather update. We'll start with a live cam. This is up in Breckenridge, Colorado. Uh, you can see a little bit of snow kind of flying across the lens. That is actually just from the wind. Um, it is uh, dry. It's clear otherwise, but it is very cold across parts of Colorado this morning. I want to take you up to uh, a place we call Fraser, Colorado, up near Winter Park. And this is at US 40 there at Fraser. And this is one of the ice boxes. Of Colorado, you know, we're pretty used to minus 15, minus 20, minus 25 at a lot of our um, resorts and some of our mountain valleys. But this morning, look at the air temperature in Fraser. Uh, bottom down at minus 44 this morning. That is incredibly cold. Um, luckily, the winds up there are pretty light, but that is. Uh, exceptionally cold even here in Colorado all right let me take you to uh, radar here this morning and show you what it looks like so here it is across the west there's not much happening there's um, a couple of storm systems lined up and you can kind of see the first one the first one's minor it's just a almost like a clipper like system that's going to come out of the uh, come out of Canada and then kind of roll down through Montana clipping parts of Wyoming clipping parts of Colorado and that's a little bit of the moisture return you see from that up there in Montana and Idaho this morning. Again, that's a pretty minor system. The larger storm system is coming in 124, 25, and 26, uh, which is, is still sitting out over the ocean. Um, okay, let me take you to radar up in the northeast. We've got uh, lake effect happening off of Ontario, Lake Erie, some off of Lake Michigan. Huron, so uh, lake effect continues, and it probably continues into tomorrow as well across a lot of the uh, the Great Lakes. All right, down to the Gulf Coast, man, this is the big story here. Look at the snow in blue over the top of Houston, Lake Charles, Baton Rouge. You've got snow over New Orleans. Snow will be moving into Pensacola. Probably going to see ice in Tallahassee, Panama City uh, Beach. Uh, we got snow on the cold side up there in parts of Mississippi. Rolling into Alabama. I mean, a little bit of snow for Atlanta. You're really on the northern periphery, but this is a huge story. Uh, I mean, this is some of the, the biggest, these are going to be some of the biggest snow totals we've seen in a long, long time in the deep south. All right, let me take you to water vapor satellite imagery. So in the low levels, your oranges and reds are on this map are going to be your drier air. And the uh, the moistures and the whites and the blues. And you can really, you can kind of see the clipper right here. You kind of see that uh, that wave running through the atmosphere. And again, that's minor. And that's going to kind of come down through here. And then it's going to roll up into the Great Lakes. And on its way through, it does clip Montana. It clips Wyoming. It clips Colorado. Um so all those areas are going to be affected. All right, let me recenter. And then there's another storm system out over the uh, the Pacific. Um, and you can kind of see it here. There it is. That's going to be our next storm system. That's going to run up and basically come down through parts of B.C., Alberta, drop into Montana. And now it, it, it looks like it will brush the Wasatch as it comes down. It'll hit Montana, uh, Wyoming, the Tetons, and then it's going to roll down into Colorado. And it actually... There's a piece of it that might break off um, and develop into a pretty large trough and affect California. This would be the first chance of snow for the Sierra in a long in weeks. So that's a possibility with that whole setup. Okay, let me show you my bullet points here this morning. So very cold morning. I pointed that out well below zero in a lot of Colorado. Um, then we've got that clipper. I showed you the clipper over the northern plains, 122, 123, brushes Montana, Wyoming, Colorado. And then the stronger front, 124, 25, 26, comes out of B.C. It's Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico. Here's my snow timeline, best odds of snow. So for big sky, you got light snow tomorrow, light snow accumulation, and then light to moderate accumulation, 124. There's really only one chance for the Wasatch and the Tetons. Wasatch, 125. Tetons 124. Now Colorado, different story. Light on during the afternoon of 122, and then potentially heavy accumulation now as it looks. 124, 25, and 26. As the front comes in, it may get hung up and it may sit there for a longer duration over the mountains of Colorado. Interior BC pretty light. Tahoe, there's that one chance on 125. First chance in weeks. In the northeast, light, and then potentially light to moderate, 128, 129. All right, looking at uh, Alta, Utah, we'll drill down. This is the forecast at about 9,000 feet 
over the next few days. There's our column for today, the 21st. There's Wednesday, there's Thursday, there's early Friday. Uh, we're zeroed out. I don't have any precip. Again, the one chance comes on the 25th for the Wasatch. But look at the winds. They are gusty the next two, di two and a half days. Gust today up to 35, maybe 40 miles an hour, similar on Wednesday, and then they start to drop down. But likely they'll come back up. They'll increase closer to the 25th. So we'll start uh, below zero this morning up there, hit a high of about 20 today. So a nice warm-up, Alta, Snowbird, Solitude, Brighton, about 14 tomorrow, and about 21 on Thursday. Okay, let's go to Colorado. Uh, let me take you to Cameron Pass up in the northern mountains of Colorado. I'm looking for green on this time height forecast, and this is a 72-hour forecast. You're looking from, you read this from right to left, and so you'll notice a little bit of that green starts to increase, especially once we get into the 22nd and the 23rd. That's going to be that that little clipper that comes through and kind of brushes. So we might see an inch, maybe two, maybe a three-inch amount on the outside, but you can see that green continues through the 23rd with that clipper then the moisture will start to increase again with the main the main cold front the main storm system that's um, 24 25 26 and you can see some of that the very end of the chart the green starts to increase so a couple of different fronts looking at snow accumulation over time draw your attention down to the gulf states first you can see i mean the model's cranking out um, the, the light blues are under three inches. Once you pop into the greens, that's three to six. Yellow's over six. This is cranking out over six inches of snow along the Gulf Coast. I mean, this is incredible to see this kind of accumulation. Um, we talked to, uh, I talked to a, um, a meteorologist with the Weather Service down in Houston, and they were saying that this, is, this could be some of the biggest accumulations in, in decades across that area long time okay so this is the view at lunchtime today here we are by late look at that snow accumulation moving into the panhandle of, uh, of florida also uh, mobile you've got snow accumulation through new orleans all right here we are by late today um, and here comes that clipper you see that clipper kind of sitting up over the northern plains this is early wednesday morning very light accumulations through montana alberta and parts of uh, wyoming that drops down. Here we are by dinner time on Wednesday. Here's late Wednesday, kind of clipping parts of Colorado with one to two, again, maybe three inches at the very highest uh, as far as amounts. Here we are by lunchtime on Thursday. Now, here comes our main storm system. Here we are early on Friday the 24th. You can see it dropping down out of BC and Alberta into Montana. And then it starts to affect Wyoming. And then the moisture starts to, here we are by early Saturday, the 25th, snow will drop down to Denver in the front range with snow accumulation likely. Um, snow accumulation starts to increase across the mountains of Colorado, across the High Uintas, across the Wasatch, and look at the snow stretching back to the west, reaching towards California. That's that break-off piece of energy with the trough. Here we are by lunchtime. Now this model stretches the front out and kind of stalls it. I think the front is going to move further to the south. There's really nothing to stop it until it gets into the central mountains of Colorado. So this, this positions it a little too far north for my liking. I think it's going to move further to the south. All right, here we are by 11 on Saturday. Here's lunch. Look at the snow across Tahoe down to Mammoth. Um, here we are by late on the 25th. Um, this has got snow accumulation even for southern Utah. Southwest Colorado. This is 5 a.m. on Sunday, and then it moves the low through during the day on Sunday. Again, I don't particularly care for the positioning and the track on this on this model, but it gives you an idea that there's an initial front, and then there's the main storm system later in the period. Okay, here's my official forecast. So all of today through the 26 looks like this. We'll start in the Wasatch. I haven't changed anything here. Three to six inches, again, mainly on the 25th. Very light snows for the Tetons, one to two inches. Roughly fives up there through Big Sky, Bridger Bowl, and also Red Lodge. Lighter accumulations pretty much everywhere else through northwest Montana, um, Idaho, interior BC, maybe two or three inches in parts of Revelstoke, Kicking Horse, and Marmon Basin. But then everything else is very light. Even in the Sierra with this one shot of snow through Tahoe down to Mammoth, it's only one to three inches. It's not a we just don't there's not a lot of dynamics with this thing for that area now in colorado the numbers have all gone up i increased them all especially in the central and northern mountains where i think the front's going to come south and really get hung up over the i-70 corridor i think we'll easily produce six to twelve inches of accumulation and i've got tens 
um, in a number of locations, from Aspen Snow Mask, um, Powderhorn, all the way up into uh, Vail, Copper, Summit County, Loveland, A Basin, Keystone, Winter Park, and I've even got more up there over Cameron Pass and Eldora. Now, in southern Colorado, I've got sixes through Monarch down to Silverton, and then lighter amounts pretty much everywhere else down into northern New Mexico. You'll get a little bit of accumulation. Um, six down in Bryan Head and a couple for Snowball. Okay, going to the northeast, I don't have anything major here. Very light accumulations. Really, the big, uh, the big factor is going to be the lake effect. Um, with that plume coming off, certainly four or five inches in those preferred areas off of uh, the lake. Everybody else, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, Massachusetts, is zero to one to two, maybe three inches on the outside. Okay, back into uh, the western map. We'll end it right here. And again, the biggest numbers appear to be in Colorado with this. Um, where the, all the numbers have trended up. So that'll be an interesting thing to watch. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care. Have a great day.